Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to create this auto scroll infinite slider using Bricks Nestable Slider. This is a very popular feature that you see in a couple of websites uh, where you have these cards or pictures or anything you wish to use here, scroll infinitely um, and then you pause on hover and also pauses on, um, on focus. And you're also going to learn how to add extra functionality to the Bricks Nestable Slider. So let's jump into Bricks and begin. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add a section. Now, if you notice here that our slider, you know, moves from edge to edge of the screen. So we're going to add a section and section are, you know, full width by default. So, but the container are usually not full width. So uh, the containers usually have a default width for the side width. But in this case, we're going to change this container width to a hundred percent. Our section has a default padding also. So we're going to give a padding of zero, zero, so you can see that our section and our container is uh, both full width. So the next thing is going to drop a nestable slider. So I'm just going to nestable slider. We can have different multiple slides here. Okay. But you know, usually when you want to do stuff like this, a lot of times you want to use dynamic data. So I'm going to use a query for, I'm going to use a product image and a product title. So right here we have a product image title and price. And if you want to use static divs, you can just go ahead and follow the example. Okay, you don't need to do the dynamic part, but in my own case, I'm going to use dynamic data. But in your own case, if you want to use static data, you can have the number of slides you want. Okay, so I'm, for me, I'm going to delete this too. And then this will be my loop item. So I'm going to go to content and I'm going to turn it to a loop. And the query is going to be post. The post type is going to be product. And I think that's basically it. Um, post per page. I'm not just going to bother with that. And I'm going to delete both of this. Now, what I'm going to do now is to go to the slider and go to the options. Um, I'll leave everything as default, but for the height, I'm going to change it to auto. And then uh, I'm going to choose auto play, pause on hover and pause on focus. For the items to show, I'm going to give it five because I want five items. And for the spacing, I'm just going to give it two rem or let's say 1.7 rem. So um, already uh, we can see our uh, you know, grids, we can see our cards uh, because we don't have our, our content yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a block inside there and I need two of them. The first one is going to hold my image. So I'm going to just add the image and for that image uh, it's going to be a dynamic data and I'm going to use that as a featured image. The featured image automatically is going to pull in the image for the product. Yes, for that, uh, that I want that block to be have a background of white okay so i hope that is white and now for the second block the second block is going to contain the product uh, title and the product price so for that i'm just going to use uh, a basic text and for the product price i'm just going to check for the price and actually uh, the product title has also um, the product title let's see okay so we don't have so that settings I'm supposed to search for not settings uh, the brick search you know uh, has a anyway so I can drop in a product title element let's so I'm going to remove this now uh, for the product title I want the typography uh, the font size to be say 1.4 rem uh, I think that's okay and then for the price uh, the price is, uh, I'm going to just go in here and set the typography for the price to be, say, 18 pixel. Um, when you are typing, uh, one tip is that when you are typing a value in the Bricks uh, value, okay, you really don't need to put uh, the pixel because pixel is the, is the default unit, okay? It's the default unit. So you don't need to explicitly, see, explicitly write, uh, you know, write that pixel. So what I want here is 18 and then I have 18 there. Okay. So um, for this block, I think I'm going to give it a padding round. So I'm going to go to layout and just give it uh, a two rem padding all round. And for this, this is not going to have a padding. So let me save this. Now we're supposed to see our loop. Um, sorry, we're supposed to see our slider in action and it is not giving us what we want. Now we don't want a pagination because auto scroll doesn't need a pagination. And for these, uh, let's see, we already say item to show. 
should be five. So, and okay, it's already beginning to show it. It takes some time to kick in. And now I need to separate this uh, title from the price. So I'm going to just select the block and give it a row gap of, uh, let's say one rem, and that should be enough. I'm going to select those two, two blocks. The f I'm going to give them the flex growth of one each so that they fill in, um, you know, they fill it in. Yeah, you can see. And for this one, I still want to give it a background, but I want the background to be slightly different. Okay. So I'm going to go to background and just give it. So you can see it's slightly different. It's not exactly white, just to separate it. And then for our slide, I want to have a border radius. So I'm going to go to a, a border. Uh, border and then I'm gonna just give it a border radius of two rem and then of course I need the contents to be you know not to overflow so I'm gonna go to layout and then under overflow I'm just gonna type in hidden it would be nice if they have a drop down to choose and that's it so let's save that so all the while we did not have our slider inside this container so I'm just gonna move it in so yeah, let's save again and look at the front end. And then I'm just going to let that refresh. Now you notice that there is a kind of a background here and that background is coming from, I think it's coming from the slider. So uh, I'm just gonna check that we have a, that background and I'm just gonna um, remove it altogether. We don't need that background. Rather, I wanna give my section a background color of, uh, let's just make it something of white like that probably would want to make this a bit darker than this uh, desaturate yeah something like that so so yeah bricks is still saving all right it's done saving so let's go to the front end and see it refresh so um before that happens um it's, it's auto playing so we do not want that so i'm going to go back to the slider and options and then i'm going to turn off auto play we do not want auto play i'm going to save that again Yeah, and let's take the front end and then um, our layout looks okay. So we have, um, yep, we have a layout working. Now, so the next thing is how do we make it like this? How do we make it, um, you know, auto scroll like that? Um, okay, so in our own case, we have our images higher, taller, and things are generally larger in our own, but that's not the point of this uh, tutorial. The point is to make it just, um, you know, make it auto scroll but if you want to reduce the image you can always go to that image and just give it a, a maximum height or a height so i can go to layout here and give it a maximum height of say 250 pixels and or two 200 i mean it just depends on what you do but you have to give it an object fit of cover if you're going to be doing that but um, i'm not going to give it that height okay and uh, I'm ju i just want to leave it like that so the next thing we're going to do is to find a way to auto scroll this. So how are we going to do that? And I'm going to jump in to do that. You have to go to splite.js, um, splitejs.com. Okay. Because that is the library that the bricks nestable slider uses. So uh, if you scroll all the way down, you know, you're going to find auto scroll and this says it requires an extension. Okay. And if I click here, it's going to take me to, to more, give me more information about that extension. But then this, uh, you have to go to, uh, you have to get that from a CDN. In our own case, we have to install it from a CDN. So I'm going to click this CDN and it's going to take me here. And right here, I'm going to just come here and copy the HTML. Now, uh, so I'm going to go back into uh, slider and I'm going to select my container and just put in a code block there. So I need my code block to be there. And so I'm just going to select this and then I'm going to paste that's uh, what I copied from the CDN. Okay. And I'm going to go back down here and then open another script tag. So I'm just going to write a uh, script and I'm going to close it. So yeah, inside here, we're going to do something. Now let's go back there. Uh, so if we go back there, you're going to see uh, what they're doing here is so um, the setup is, this is the setup. So this is what we're going to use. So if you're importing the files, after that, we're going to use new splite, and then we're going to select the, the slider, and we're going to say mount uh, windows splite extension, win, uh, windows.splite.extension. So that's uh, uh, basically uh, what we're going to do. And um, so I'm just going to copy that. And let's go back here, and I'm going to 
case that. But uh, we need to target this specific slider. So for this uh, specific slider, I'm going to give it an ID. And I'm just going to give it um, an ID of. So let's um, edit that. So I'm just going to say scroll slider. So that's what I'm calling it. I'm calling it scroll slider. So I'm going to go here. So instead of using this, I'm going to use that ID. So I'm um, just going to take that off and just call it scroll slider and I need this to be executed so I need that code to execute okay so let's check if it is going to work all right so it's not working now uh, let's see if we check our console it's saying splide is not defined so what is going to happen is, what is happening here is that the code tries to run but uh, the slider is not defined so we need to delay this um, from running so what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, wrap this in a function and that function, I'm going to call it a uh, slider init. And so I'm going to wrap this in that function. And then um, for us to call that function, we need to uh, have a timeout function. So we need a timeout function that is going to call that function. So inside that timeout function, we're going to declare a timeout. And that timeout is going to, is going to be set timeout. Okay, uh, the set timeout, and then we're going to call that slider init function, and then we're going to give it um, give it a time uh, in 300 milliseconds. So we're going to call it and say after 300 seconds, you know, run this function, and then um, that is not all. It's still not enough because this is also a function. So, and uh, outside this function, we are going to uh, just call the timeout function. Yeah, like that. But we need to clear that timeout from here. So I'm just going to say clear, clear timeout. And I'm just going to say clear timeout. Yep. And inside there, I'm just going to put the name of this timeout there. Theoretically, this should work. So I'm going to save that. And, and we're going to take a look at the front end. So it's refreshed and you can see it's working. So if I point cursor there, it stops. And remember, there was a time I have a video on, you know, infinite scroll. Um, and that was that we were using um, CSS for that. But this is the proper way of doing this. So you can use this for any kind of infinite slide that you want. And if I um, focus on it now, right now, we don't have any link like inside there. So there's nothing to focus. So we're going to, you want to make your cards clickable, all right? So I'm going to go to the product title and then I'm going to go to the tag. Um, all right, so this is having a tag of uh, H1, but if I want this to um, to be clickable, I'll probably select the, and I, I, I wouldn't recommend selecting the whole of the slide, okay? So what I would do is um, I'll go to the product title. Now uh, this tag comes as an H1, which I really don't think is a good idea. So what I would do rather is to use a, a text instead of that product um, title, um, but I'm still going to call it, I'm just going to call it title. And then um, I'm going to delete this. Okay. And for here, I want to use dynamic data uh, as post title. Then for the tag, I'm going to give it a custom tag and give it a, and then I want to link to dynamic data and then the dynamic data will be post link. Okay. So now we have that. And then for our settings, uh, the typography, I'm going to give it uh, still the same font size of, was it 18? I can't remember. Sorry, it was uh, maybe 1.2 RAM. So depending on what it was, okay. And then for the weight, I want to give it 600. And for the color, uh, I'm just going to give it that color or something darker. So now you can see that there we have, um, we still have a title, but now it is, you know, it is linked to the product. So now um, let this refresh. So now you can see that this links, but um, so it links to the, you know, the single product page. But now what if we want everything to link? Okay, so uh, that only links to the single product page. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go and select this slide. Okay, because this is the main card and I'm going to go to layout and then go to position and set it to be relative because we want to use 
this product title um, pseudo element. Now I find that it's faster to just write a CSS instead of coming here to use the pseudo element and move into different um, settings. Everything being in one place for me, I think is more preferable. So I'm gonna use custom CSS and then I'm gonna write root and uh, that root, I'm, I wanna target the before, okay? And, and then I'm going to just, uh, first thing we wanna write the content, okay? And that content, for me, I just like writing hello at first. I wanna see it, okay? And then I wanna give it a background so I can see it too. All right, so and so so you can see that it's coming up there, and then but I want the position to be absolute, and I want the inset to be zero. So you can see it fills up the whole card. Um, so now that we have seen that it fills up the whole card, I'm going to remove that background, and then I'm going to remove this hello and just leave the double the quote you know mark there. Um, now, inset is a short form of writing. Uh, you can write writing top zero, uh, bottom uh, bottom zero, left zero, and right zero. Uh, the 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 difference is that this has about ninety two percent browser support. So the older browser don't support it, but this has very good browser support. So it depends on your audience. So, but right now I'm just going to use the inset for mine. And I'm going to save it. So I'm going to go to the front. Yep. I think if we, yeah. So we saved and it refreshed. So you can see now that the whole, um, the whole card is uh, clickable. Yep. And that brings an end to a tutorial, except you want to take a look at the, you know, um, maybe the lower breakpoints. Uh, uh, so you can always go in there. Uh, we have items to show. If you come to this breakpoint, you can make it maybe three. You come to the lowest breakpoints. Uh, maybe you can make it item to show one and uh, I think it would just be good. Maybe 1.5 should 1.5 shows one and some extra, but let's just make it 1.2. So I'm going to save that. So I'm just going to check that um, to see. So you can see that it works. Um, we have uh, that, that tablet portrait should be three. And uh, this is 1.2. So we have five tablet portrait three. And uh, this, maybe this should be two. And then this should be 1.5. So let's save that and refresh. All right, so this looks good. Okay. So we have this. We have this. We have for the phone. Okay. So yeah, so that's it. And uh, yeah, that brings an end to the tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss another tutorial. I'm going to be bringing tutorials on uh, many other things. And if you would like to know how to set up a dynamic thumbnail carousel like this, um, check out this video right here. And also check out other Bricks tutorials linked in the top right corner. Have a great day. Bye.